My friends just bought a two-bedroom and two-bathroom house for $1.3 million in the Bay Area. And my question is, is it better to buy a house now or to rent and wait until the housing market gets better? And what would better conditions even look like? I've tried to find videos online to help me decide, but most of them don't have the things that I need. They don't talk about how much your house would appreciate over time. They don't talk about how much rent you would pay if your rent increases. And they don't talk about the opportunity costs that I would have to give up by buying a house. But most importantly, they don't talk about my specific situation. They just give me an estimate on whether I should or should not buy. But my situation is special to my own. So since I can't find the information that I need out there, I just made my own. Hi, my name is Bon. I'm a math teacher and I make math videos about finance. So, how do you accurately calculate which is a better option between buying a house and renting? Well, the theory that I found was called renting and investing the difference. I did not make this up, but it seemed like a very good idea. The whole premise is that buying a house costs a lot more money than renting, obviously. Okay. So what if you take that extra money that you would spend on your house and then invest it into an index fund? Would you have more money after 30 years by renting or would you have more money by buying a house? Well, according to Fred, the average American house appreciates around 4% per year. And that means that if you have a $500,000 house, the next year it's going to appreciate by 4%. Or $500,000 times 0 0.04, which equals to $20,000. The total value of the house would be $500,000 plus $20,000, or $520,000. Now, there is an easier way to calculate this number, and that is to just add one to the percentage. So what you would do is you take $500,000 times one plus 0 0.04, which equals to $520,000. Now, what if you wanna figure out how much your house would be valued at year two? Well, you would just do the same thing again. You would take $520,000 times 1.04. That would give you $540,800. The extra $800 is your interest from the $20,000 that you made last year. So as you guys can see, every year your house is going to appreciate more and more and more. So what if you want to figure out how much your house is valued after 30 years? Well, you would just have to do that 30 times. But no one's really going to do that 30 times. So what you guys can do is to just plug it into a spreadsheet. So uh, let's say that your house value is at 500000 okay? At a 4% increase, okay? that means that your house value is going to be $1.62 million in 30 years. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty happy with that appreciation. I mean, I got more than three times the value that I originally paid for, right? which is really, really good. However, it is important to understand that the 4% average is based on the entire US market. The city that you're living in could have a higher appreciation rate or it could have a lower appreciation rate. So make sure you guys understand your city very well and you guys can change the appreciation rate. Now, let's get to the painful part of the calculation, and that is calculating the cost of the house. With any house, of course, you guys have a down payment, and that down payment is usually 20%. But then there's the closing costs, which could be around 3.5%. So on a $500,000 house, even before you start living there, you would already spend $117,500. And then what happens after you buy it? You have to refurnish it. Right? Even if the house is very, very good, you still have to organize it and buy all the things necessary to make your house your house. So for me, 
a very conservative estimate is 1% of the house costs. So if your house costs around $500,000, you're probably going to spend at least $5,000 on just refurnishing and remodeling it. That brings your total house cost to $122,500. Now, and that's just the beginning, okay? That's usually the easiest part. Harder part is calculating everything else. So uh, let's do the calculations. If you have a $500,000 house and then you put a down payment of 20%, that means that you're going to take a loan for $400,000. At the current interest rate of 7.5%, you would pay a mortgage of $2,796 per month. Now, I wish that that was everything you guys had to pay, but it's not. Okay? There are a lot of other hidden costs, right? such as uh, the maintenance costs, right? which is probably around 1% of your average household value. 1% of $500,000 is $5,000. You take that and divide it by 12, you get $416.67. That is how much you have to pay for maintenance costs every month. Yeah. And then after that, there's property tax, which is also an average of 1% of the value. So and that's another $416.67. And then there's the other thing, right? Other things such as the HOA fees or the insurance or maybe some other things that you guys might have. For that, I'm estimating, but I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing that is half a percent of the home value which is $208. If you guys think that my estimations are too conservative, you guys can add more money right here for any additional costs. Or you guys can subtract money. So that brings your total monthly costs to $3,838. Now, just remember, this does not include electricity, water, gas, anything, anything else. Right? This is just payment for the house. Yeah, everything else is extra. So if you multiply that by 12, your yearly cost for the house is going to be $46,062 a year. If you add that to the initial home cost, that would add up to $168,526. So that is how much you guys would have to pay during the first year over a hundred thousand dollars just to start living. Now, if you're thinking that, okay, um, I can afford $46,000 a year to pay in the house. That is actually not true because there is something called inflation. Uh, inflation affects everything around the house, especially the maintenance, the property, the insurance, and anything else that you would buy. The only thing that it doesn't affect is the mortgage. So, how do you calculate the inflation rate without the mortgage rate? The inflation rate is an average of 2.5%. So, what you guys would do is you would take $46,062, then you would subtract the yearly mortgage, which is 12 times 2,796. You take that, you multiply it by 1.025, that would give you the inflation rate on everything else other than the mortgage. And then you actually have to add back in the mortgage. So you have to um, plus 12 times $2,796. That would give you uh, $46,374 the next year. So every year you are going to increase around $300 into your house. So as you guys can see here, after 30 years, you are going to be paying around $59,000 just to live in your house. And if you add all the yearly costs together, you would pay around $1.67 million just to live in that house. But you know what? Um, that's actually okay because your house value is going to be worth $1.62 million. So you're basically broke even. The way that I think about it is that if you are not living in that house, you would have to pay to rent somewhere else to live. So at the very least, if you're living in your own house, you would break even in 30 years. So now, how much does it cost to rent an apartment for 30 years? So currently, if you want to rent a place that is comparable to a $500,000 house, 
it would cost you around $2,000 a month. To calculate how much it costs to rent a place is actually pretty easy. You take that $2,000 a month, multiply it by 12, and then you would spend around $24,000 a month to rent. Right? Pretty simple math. Now, what most people don't calculate in is that rent prices increase year after year. So how do you calculate that? Well, it's the same thing as you would with a house appreciation value. So currently right now, uh, rent increases at around 5% per year. Uh, it depends on where you are and it depends on if your city has rent control or not. But let's assume that it's 5%. If your first year is going to be $24,000, to calculate how much you would pay the year afterwards, you would just take $24,000 times 1.05. That would give you $25,200. You do the same thing for the next 30 years and then you would be shocked to figure out how much you had to pay after 30 years. Because it is going to be $98,000 a year to live in your house. Uh, to live in your apartment. And if you add up all the renting costs, you would pay $1.594 million. Right? Almost $1.6 million. And then the thing with renting is that at the end of 30 years, you're still going to be renting because you don't own a house. Eh? You would be paying more the next year, probably 100000 the next year. That is where the phrase throwing your money away by renting comes from. Now, what if you rent and invest a difference? Since it costs more to own a house than to rent a place, what if you just take all that money that you would spend on your house, but then instead invest it into an index fund, something like the S&P that gets an average of 7% per year? How much money would you have over 30 years? Well, let's check it out. So the math for this is pretty straightforward. And you take the initial amount that you would spend in your house. Right? So in this case, it would be $122,500. This includes the down payment, the closing costs, and the remodeling fee. You put that into an index, and then every year you would get around 7% return if you put it into the S&P. Now, since each year you're paying more for your house than for your apartment, you would take that money and then you add it into the S&P 500 or into your investment. So the math for this is that you would take $122,500 times 1.07 and then you add the amount that you save from buying a house versus renting a place. So that would be 46,000 minus 24,000. That would give you a total amount of $154,681. And then the next year, you would take 7% of this again, but then you add a little bit less because it's $46,000 minus $25,000. And then the year after that, it's $46,600 minus $26,000. So every year, you are putting less and less into investments. Now, eventually, you will hit a point where your house cost and your rent will actually be the same. And for this, it would be around uh, it would be around 17 years. So in 17 years, you would spend around $52,000 in your house, and you would spend around $52,000 in your mortgage, uh, in your rent. So that means that you are not adding anything more. But the year afterwards, year 18, you are actually taking money out of your investment account to pay for your rent. So anything after 18 years, eh, you are taking money from your investment. And even with that, after 30 years, you are still going to have $1.7 million. So what can you do with $1.7 million? Well, there's a lot that you can do. You can buy a house, you can buy this exact house for $1.6 million, and then have an extra $100,000 left over. Uh, well, that's the plan anyways, but that's not really how it works because of capital gains tax. Now, you still have to pay for capital gains tax. So realistically, you would probably have $1.4 or $1.5 million, which is still a good amount, which is still a good amount of money. And even though it is less than $1.6 million, you don't have the headache of owning a house, doing maintenance, and paying for everything else. Now, this is a very specific example of a very specific situation. 
chances are this isn't your situation right now. But if you want a rough estimate, you can use the rule of 250. So and the rule of 250 states that if you would take the value of the house and you divide it by 250, that should give you how much you should pay for your monthly rent. For example, if you want to buy a house that costs a million dollars, then all you have to do is take that one million dollars, divide it by 250, and then you get four thousand dollars. That should be the break-even point of the rent versus buy dilemma. So if you can find a comparable home that is less than $4,000 a month, then you should rent. If the rent price is above $4,000, then you should probably buy. And it also works the other way around. If your rent is $4,000 a month, you take $4,000, multiply it by 250, that would give you $1 million. So if you find a good home that is less than $1 million, then you should probably buy it. Okay? If you find a home that is more than a million dollars, then you should probably rent. Now, uh, this is a very big disclaimer. Okay? There are a lot of factors that I did not calculate into my spreadsheet. Factors such as the tax benefits of owning a home, okay? the capital gains tax on your investments, which is significant, and the biggest thing that I didn't factor is what if you refinance and get a lower interest rate? Let's say that after five years, you refinance your 7.5% to a 5%. Okay? That 2% makes a very big difference. So uh, that's it. And I hope this video has given you guys some clarity and some peace of mind before you guys make a big life decision. If you guys want this spreadsheet, then I have some bad news for you guys and some good news too. The bad news is that I'm selling this spreadsheet for $20. Okay? I spent a lot of time on this and I think I should be compensated for it. The good news is that if I make any updates on this spreadsheet, which I probably will, I will send it to you guys for absolutely free. Please know that your purchase will help support me and my channel to create more math related videos about finance. Alright, thank you very much and please subscribe.